Many of my videos are a little, um, destructive. But today, I want to try something that's a little more soothing. I've always been fascinated by the pneumatic functions in LEGO. And something that I haven't seen anyone else do yet is turn that into a musical instrument. So, let's see if we can build an air-powered wind instrument using LEGO pneumatics. First off, we're gonna need to store some air. And wouldn't you know it, soda bottles can be pressurized beyond what LEGO can handle. So, let's bust some holes in these caps, pop in some pipes, and double up to make a nice storage tank. To make our music, I'm gonna use this set of pan pipes. Now, knowing nothing about them, when you blow into the mouthpiece, I, I just assume it'll give us our regular notes from A to G. Then, we can pressurize these bottles using the small handheld compressor. LEGO should be able to comfortably handle up to around 40 psi, and this valve then can release the air through this pipe, which, when we move it to the mouthpiece, creates these notes. Delightful. Okay, now we need to hold these pipes in place. Fortunately enough, this scaffold happens to perfectly fit the dimensions of the pipes with virtually no wiggle. And now we have the mouthpiece exposed and ready for the hosing to blow into. There's 16 pipes in total, giving us 16 possible notes. Next then, we'll need to control which pipes we activate. This valve will do, though it is very stiff to move. These pieces can act as our keys, and these pipes will be our input and output. When we press the key, the valve is opened. And here's a bunch more of them. Adding this one here makes seven keys in total, one for each note A through G. Once we hook up the hosing, we now have an air input going into each key and an output hose that will go to the pipes. To hold each key up and in the closed position, these elastic bands will do the trick. They're a little bit slow, but this is sort of like an organ, so maybe it'll sound okay. These rubber Lego pieces can hold onto the pipes, and they can then be attached to the lift arm under the mouthpiece. Okay, let's see. Hmm, maybe? <laughs> Yuck, no, that, that's horrible. This isn't gonna work. I have a thought though. I made this pneumatic gun a while back that relies on crimping the pipe instead of using a valve to release air. You can see here if I compress the tank and then pull the trigger, the pipe opens explosively releasing the air. So, what if we try the same trick here? I'm gonna fold this piece of pipe in the cage here and secure it in place so that when I push down on this axle, it compresses the pipe, crimping it and blocking the air. We'll need it to permanently crimp it until I want it open, so this elastic band will hold it down. Then we'll need our keys, which will essentially just be a lever opening the crimped pipe. If I press down, it opens the pipe. Alright, well, that works way better, and much more responsive. Tell you what, let's have seven more of them. They certainly move much better than before. Each key will be fed by a pipe going to the air tank. If you'd like to see more of these LEGO experiments, feel free to like or subscribe, or even join my membership underneath the video to see more behind the scenes as I build these contraptions. Cheers! Okay, let's hook her up. This pressure gauge will tell us what we're working with. And now if I add our tanks, give them a pump, and then release the air to the keyboard, you can see that we've got around yeah, 30 psi. Hmm, while the keys work well, 
but the air isn't entering the mouthpiece very well. Maybe with a little bit of wiggling. Hmm, yeah, nah, no, still not great. We need another way of feeding this air to the mouthpiece. This long Lego axle can host these pneumatic connectors. And this, I think, is an elegant solution because not only can I get a good angle on the mouthpiece, but they can also slide up and down to allow me to reprogram it to play different notes. This band then will encourage the pipes to hold their optimal angle into the mouthpiece, and now we can hook them up. Here, I've got them positioned to play the bottom seven notes. <laughs> Alright, fingers crossed, let's see how this fares. Hey, awesome! I'm just delighted with this. This took an absurd amount of trial and error to get this to work. There's even enough pressure to play multiple notes at once. Now, I've got to admit something here. I have a bit of a problem. Kind of like handing a typewriter to a monkey. I can press buttons all day long, but I don't really know how to make it do anything useful. My knowledge of music and instruments is, uh, well, not much better than the monkey. So uh, this took me a stupid amount of time to learn, but here's my god-awful first attempt at learning green sleeves, using notes that probably aren't tuned correctly, and uh, getting some of the notes wrong. Yeah, nope, that was, that was still wrong. How about Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Surely that's easy? Yeah, sort of. A little bit screechy though. Sorry, that was awful. Okay, so what I can do though is painstakingly record every single note individually and then attempt to build a song using those clips so that my bumbly fingers don't get tripped up. Now, th this is kind of cheating for sure, but still pretty challenging given my minimal understanding of music and theory. Uh, let let's see if this works. Here's my second attempt at green sleeves. And then lastly, here's my attempt at converting Californication into basic notes. I'd like to extend a big thanks to my buddy Tom for helping translate this one. Okay, well, while I might be musically challenged, I think the machine actually does work quite well. So I'm sure someone with musical knowledge and skill could likely make this machine really sing. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to suggest some improvements.